Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at a new keyboard from Red Dragon that is Hall Effect. So this is their first HE or Magnetic Hall Effect keyboard from Red Dragon. Um, a lot of companies have been putting out their own. This one is in a particular model, the K-Fizz or the K617, um, I believe. Yep, K617, which is uh, a model that I have um, several different uh, versions of, the Pro, the Normal. And I gotta say, this is one of my favorite 60% plastic kits to mess around with. Yes, it is tray mounted, but can be made to sound really well, and it it's just a good keyboard. Um, the Pro version has, I believe, a 1500 milliamp hour battery, but some reason lasts twice as long as some keyboards I have that have a three or 4000 milliamp hour battery. I don't know what magic Red Dragon is putting into here. So seeing that this is Red Dragon's first venture out into the HE world of the Hall Effect magnetic keyboards, um, I'm really interested to see what they bring with this K617. As, like I said, I have... There's the K617 and the K531. Both are similar yet different um, 60%, but I've had a lot of fun modding them, and I've been able to mod all of them to where they sound and feel extremely good. So um, I'm also interested in seeing, because I've got an Akko, I've got this one, I've got another one. They're all hollow effect, and I'm still curious to see about the interchangeability of switches between the different manufacturers, if there's one standard or if there's numerous, like we've seen with low profile switches. I hope that's not the case, but we will be finding out. But let's go ahead and get started. Let's dive on in and see what we have with this keyboard. So first, let's take a look at what's included inside the box. Besides the keyboard, we have a nice USB-A to USB-C with an angled um, connector because the connector on these is on the side. We have some battle ready stickers that come with a lot of the red dragon if I'm not mistaken come with all of them now one of these days i'm going to sticker bomb a red dragon with all their stickers i think it'll look cool we have a simple uh, fold up manual that shows the backlight settings and all the different key combinations or how to get to the keys that are not on the keyboard and we'll also i do believe that this uses the pro software but i'll have to take a look and we also have some switches i love that red dragon includes spare switches because you never know what could go wrong now these are the hall effect switches Ooh, they're interesting they look like a creamy body i won't say palm but i won't not say palm and they are badge red dragon they're a decent linear there's no ping so they could be pre-lubricated. They have a nice, because they're not a long pull. I don't know if they have long pulls in HE switches yet, but they have more of a subdued bottom out. It's not harsh at all. It's actually more on the softer side. It's not completely quiet or silent, but it's on the softer side. So always nice that they include some extra switches because you never know when you could use them. And here we are with K617 from Red Dragon, the AT edition. Now, I've got to say, I actually, I like this keycap set. They've done a few um, keycap sets that, hmm, it's almost like a sculpted cherry. I'm not sure what profile it is. I'll have to look it up, but I like the gradient. It goes from a very dark gray to a light gray, and it has all the sub-legends for the extra keys on there. It's shine through, which isn't normally my bag, but it's a good look and shine through set if you're going to have one now now it is actually pretty good sounding out of the box it could use some tuning definitely but because those switches are either ping free or pre-lubricated there's um there's no ping so the steel plate that it has underneath which i'm guessing is a steel plate isn't resonating um, there are ways to make that a little bit quieter there's also ways to make it louder 
which is definitely something we'll be coming back to when we come back to this keyboard in the near future. Now, let me check real quick of what we got as far as stabilizers go. That's pretty interesting. We got two holes because some of these I've seen do actually have the uh, support studs, I guess you could call them. But that kind of almost looks like it would line up to where the switch is bottoming out at. But it's weird not to even see a hole. There's just, that's where the magnet makes contact. That's probably an electromagnet. As far as the stabilizers go, they are a little bit loose and a bit over lubricated. That's definitely something we can fix when we come back to modify it. Let's pop them off real quick just to take a look. Yeah, they definitely put some lubrication on there, I would say. But I'm not going to clean it up or mess with it since we're going to be doing a stock sound test. But, yeah, these are definitely lubricated, some <laughs> highly lubricated stabilizers. Let me put these back in before I end up getting grease all over myself. Yeah, you can actually see some of it's on the plate. Um, as always, we do not have the ability for screw-in stabilizers. I don't think I've seen a Red Dragon with screw and stabilizers yet. I don't think so. So let me go ahead and put these back into place. And just to confirm, yep, we do have a steel plate. Now do we have any dampening between the plate and the PCB? That's what I'm curious about. We do not. So there's so definitely something that I'm going to do when I come back to it. Um, the fact that it doesn't have any dampening between the plate and the PCB, and I can't really tell if it has anything below. So it kind of sounds like it may have something uh, below the PCB. Uh, putting in some dampening between the plate and the PCB will usually make a huge difference, especially when you're dealing with a, sta a steel uh, plate. Now, if we didn't have that, you know, dampening as we don't do, don't have here, but we did have a softer plate, like say a PC plate, this would actually, instead of sounding instead of sounding higher pitched, it would be at a lower tone, and it would make it sound a little bit deeper or closer to that thonky. I'm not sure if these switches would get us there. They're they're actually not super light. I'd say maybe 45, 50 grams. All right, let's check out what the LEDs look like on this. Oh, comes right on. So we have the north-facing RGBs. So for anybody that is, uh, you know, prefers to have the shine through keycaps on the top, you're going to have that here. Um, because these are uh, opaque, they only have the windows, so you're going to have a little bit of cutoff when it comes to the letters with clears or clear top switches, which I don't know the extent of their HE switches. I actually, I'm in the process of reviewing some of their standard switches. I actually found a couple of them that are really good, better than I expected them to be. And for the price, they're very good. But I'll have to figure out what other options they have as far as um, HE switches go. Because personally, I would stick to the opaque switches for the keycaps that are not shining through and use the clear tops for ones that are shining through. Because you may as well, if you're going for getting the RGB, having those clear tops is going to make the difference between that and having some blank spots on the legends. Now... I guess that just turned it on and off. And I know I do have the manual hand assist effects. Yep. Function right alt. So that goes to the effects. Base bar turns the light on and off. Function M is the brightness in five different steps. So one, two, three, four, five. Oh, one, two, three, four, five. 
All right, four steps end off, I should say. Don't see a way to pick a specific color. Oh, there's the single colors. What? So I'll have to look into it further. I'm almost positive you can get it on a single color, but I'll have to check that out. So all in all, we have a decent little keyboard, um, Hall effect switches. I'm going to have to go and plug it into my Windows PC um, so that I can check out the software and see what kind of actuation points and all of that effects that we have. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I took a look at the software. It looks to be an updated version of the Red Dragon software. I don't know if it's only just for this board or other boards. I didn't try any other plugins. It's, um, it does have a function layer, though, of course, uh, certain keys that are already mapped cannot be remapped. But And it still has profiles, so you can set up a work profile and a gaming profile, and they'll have different settings based on what you do. They also have a section for senior keys, and as far as I can gather, it's kind of like macros, but not really. Like, you could press one key and it can do a combination or do tap. I don't necessarily understand it. I'll have to read up a little bit more about that to see exactly what that means. But it still has the standard per key RGB um, and, you know, the functionality of the macros and the function layer. because It's really only one. Um, it also has the section for you can set the trigger point. You can also tr set the release point. So just the trigger, a quick trigger and or the release so and it goes from 0 0.1 millimeters all the way up to four millimeters from what i can see now i also did um go ahead and i put in a aco um magnetic switch in here from the aco he keyboard that i have did the calibration and it works so it appears to be compatible and because it has those two holes because I, I have seen like uh, some of the Gateron mechanical keyboard switches where are uh, HE switches that kind of have the, um, like on a five pin, they have those extra legs, but they're not really extra because, you know, there's nothing else sticking out but those legs. So it seems to be compatible with that. Um, like I said, I have another one that I'll be, well, I have another um, keyboard that I will be taking a look at shortly with, uh, with HE switches, and I'll try those switches as well, and I'll probably go ahead and place an order uh, for some standard Gatoron uh, magnetic switches and see how compatible they are. Um, this keyboard, despite it uh, being a little... It, it's a little pingy, or a little... Not pingy, because the switches aren't pinging, but it's just a little bit higher pitched and not clacky but metallic because well one of the main reasons is the steel plate plus the fact that it doesn't have any dampening between the plate and the pcb that said all of the k617s that i've gotten i've modded and despite them being tray mounted um you know plastic case keyboards i've gotten them all to sound pretty good um Definitely, they sound better than you would expect, you know, a more affordable keyboard such as this to sound. And I think I could probably fool even myself um, on if I just had the audio of different keyboards mixed up. And I could think that it's probably a keyboard of, you know, higher value or, you know, came a little bit better out of the box. But I, I'm glad that Red Dragon is entering this field. Um, it's funny because I was just talking uh, to the rep about um, keyboards. And we, like I said, we discuss a lot of things and they are, they're always asking for my input. And I mean, I'm more than willing to share my input and the input that I've received from the community. And I'm glad that I can act as kind of like a bridge. I mean, obviously, they're not going to take everything I say and go ahead and implement it. But the fact that they are listening to what I have to say. I'm doing my best to echo the sentiments of the community and share this with them. I think it's going to lead to them making better products. And I think it's a win-win situation for all of, everybody involved. Um, like I said, I've been dealing with uh, Red Dragon now for 
well over a year and it's always been a pleasant experience um one time i had an issue with a keyboard and it's actually how i started talking to them but their customer support was surprisingly better than i expected so um it's it's been an interesting journey watching them you know come up because i mean when i first started like i said the red dragon boards were either not hot swapped or were um the o only otemu and some of them were only rainbow um instead of rgb were all, you know just it's a certain set of color key color leds and that's it um and they've come a long way i mean we have gasket mounted keyboards from them we have pc plate keyboards from them we have knobbed keyboards from them so um they're definitely dipping their toes into the water experimenting trying different things and they really just want to build products that you know people not only can afford but will enjoy and feel that they have a good value for the money and i mean as far as i can say this is for what it is i think it's a great entry into the he um field because i mean like i said a lot of a lot of manufacturers are now uh, developing HE keyboards, and um, I know of a switch maker that that's actually going to be jumping into it as well. I mean, actually, I think all the switch makers are jumping into it, as far as I can see, because I believe I've seen Kale. I know I've seen Gatoron, and of course Akko. Now we have Red Dragon, and who knows who else? But probably all of them are going to be coming out with different um, switch versions. I don't think I've seen a tactile HE switch yet, though. If you have, please let me know down below because I'd love to go ahead and purchase them and try them out and test them out. Now, if I had a little bit more time, I would go ahead and mod this keyboard as um, I know that it won't take that long, but it'll make all the difference in the world. So I'm going to kind of scoot this up on my schedule for boards to come back to. I actually plan to do an entire video comparing the HE boards I have, even though they're different layouts and everything, but kind of sharing what I like, what I don't like, what I think is good, what I think is not between the different models so that, you know, everybody can at least be informed about what's out there. And like I said, for me, I, I like HE and I like the profiles because despite me not being a full-time gamer there are times that i like to game so uh, i do actually plan to install a few more games on my pc that are a little bit more you know uh, fps that require you know because like like i said one of the biggest games i play is no man's sky um i still play starcraft every once in a while but obviously those don't require an instant response but there are some other games out there like csgo and you know, all the FPS games that would require. So I want to see if, does it improve my game? Is it the same? Is it worse? So even though I'm not a gamer gamer, I'm going to, you know, delve into a little bit because game keyboards, enthusiast keyboards are all kind of, they're mixing their features and coming together. And some keyboards that may have been considered, you know, gaming keyboards a couple years ago may be more you know kind of straddling both lines of enthusiast and gaming keyboards so i want to get a little bit more familiarized and and my son's already told me he's like oh whatever games you want to play let me know i'll teach you dad so <laughs> it'll probably be a a little um venture between my son and i uh which is something that we have planned for when they arrive we ordered some dumb pads um, from custom kbd in australia um, so, and we're going to build them together. And uh, even though I'm going to make a video, he just doesn't want his face shown. He's very privacy conscious. But it's it's a project I'm looking forward to because he's gotten into technology. He's following. I mean, I never pushed him to get into tech, you know, be like your dad. No, I just, you know, he he's had a computer since he was young. Um, well, all my kids have. And, you know, he really had a penchant for it like I did and he really enjoys it so it's really cool to see him follow along and I mean he's going to take his comp TIA test here at the end of the month and um, he's still in high school which I think is is pretty fantastic and you know I'm helping him study and it's just I don't know it's it's really cool <laughs> I just I'm over the moon 
excited about it. But I think the video of uh, both of us, you know, because we've got to solder, we got to, you know, add the microprocessor, all of that stuff. He's done very minimal soldering. So I'm going to, you know, teach him some tricks tricks of the trade and um i don't know, should make for an interesting video anyway just the specs today we're taking a look at the red dragon k617m a wired 60 percent hall effect or magnetic keyboard from red dragon it is tray mounted steel plate with north facing hot swap magnetic switch pcb it includes double shot shine through possibly abs gradient colored keycaps in a similar to cherry profile it is stated to have several gaming enhancing features such as tunable rapid trigger and dynamic keystroke this keyboard comes weighing in at 532 grams the chin sits at 20 millimeters above the typing surface while the back sits at 25 and a half millimeters providing for a default typing angle of five degrees Raising the one pair of included feet will take the back height to 32 and a half millimeters and change your angle of typing to nine degrees. The MSRP for this keyboard is $64.99. So just real quick, um, I wanted to take a look at, I don't know the, um, the product page for this is primarily geared towards gamers. Now, it looks like a cherry profile. It just looks a little sculpted. So I'm not quite sure what profile it is. I'd almost guess like an XVX, but I have no idea. It's very limited as far as other functionality goes. And I'll reach out to them and see if they can give me some updated information that I can put in the description. But um, it doesn't say what the name of these switches are. Though, I mean, I think that's probably the only set of switches they have right now that are magnetic, but I don't know. Um, these are double shot, top double shot, shine through. And the body, well, that's not bad, 1.3 millimeters. Now, I do know that magnetic keyboards, I mean, they, they started to appear, I want to say, a year and a half ago or so, and they were pricier but the prices have gone down significantly. I don't know the exact prices of the individual components, but from the number of keyboards that I've seen, I do believe this was the, the least priciest one. That being said, I still would have appreciated um, some dampening between the plate and the PCB, a different plate, aluminum, PC, anything other than steel. Um, I think that would have made a good bit of difference in as far as, I mean, I know that it's geared towards gamers. So, you know, I'm not saying go all out, but just a little bit of dampening, um, I think would have gone a long way to kind of remove that, that high pitchness that it has. I don't know if they're going for this sound specifically, but I am going to, like I said, with the assistance of my son, I'm going to get into some uh, faster paced games and use these different gaming technologies. Um, I'm going to do this with all my HE keyboards so that I can give a better comparison because I do want to, I want to see how effective they can be so that I can communicate uh, these things to my viewers. Um, so, uh, that said, like I said, I, I otherwise, I mean, it actually does not sound bad, especially because those switches do not have any ping in them. Um, it could be just really good springs, and obviously they don't have leaf springs, so there's not much in there to ping except the, uh, the spring, and because it's not pinging, it's not causing that reverberation across the board and, you know, getting amplified. So it doesn't sound horrible, but... A little dampening, I think, would have just not muted it per se, but just kind of dampen it down to where it's just a little less harsh. I think it's a little, it's a little harsh at the bottom out. Especially if you're gaming, you're gonna be hitting the keys pretty hard. Otherwise, like I said, I I think I mean if you're looking for a 60% magnetic, 
and you know you don't want to spend a couple hundred dollars which some of these are um, and you're willing to do some mods I mean if you want I mean if you like how it sounds out of the box then good to go but like I said I do believe that this is the cheapest uh, Hall effect or magnetic keyboard on the market as of right now I will double check that um, and update when like I said I'll, I'm gonna come back once I've reviewed the, I've got one more HE keyboard then I'll spend some time within maybe a week or so and I'll come back and do a video of all three and you know express what I like what I found um, what I think certain features are like I said I, I've never seen senior keys in software and there's nothing that's describing or explaining what it is and I mean I don't know if they're meaning like senior, like somebody above, like a command above, you know, like a chain of command or senior, like older. I mean, I, I, it, I, I think it's probably just um, getting lost in translation. So I'll, uh, I'll speak to the representative I talked to over at Red Dragon and see if I can get a little clarification on that. But. Until then, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test, the K617M from Red Dragon. And um, if you guys have any questions, any comments, anything you'd like for me to uh, do or cover when I do a follow-up, leave them down in the comments below. I like to get conversations going. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.